I used to take everything with me. My backpack would have a laptop, some cables, headphones, my Nintendo Switch, and in my pockets, a bulky wallet, my phone, another phone I'd have for testing. That sounds kind of bougie. While I was prepared for anything my day was to throw at me, taking all of this stuff from place to place was starting to become an ordeal. And it got me thinking, how much of this stuff am I really using? Hello and welcome to Denki Channel. My name is Ken. This video is all about everyday carry. After months of trial and error, consolidating, rethinking what's required day to day for my work and leisure, this is what I was able to boil everything down to. Let's start with the hauler itself, the thing that carries all of my stuff, the North Face Field Body Bag. It's where I store my victims. <laughs> While I find that this bag isn't without flaws, it's the most well-rounded option I've come across so far. Practically, it's light and holds a lot of things. It has adequate pockets and compartments that are easily accessible. There's also nice padding inside to protect all of your stuff. And it runs fairly slim when you pack it less. When you wear this bag across your body, I especially love the pocket that's closest to your chest, which is the safest spot to keep things like your phone, keys, or wallet tucked away while you're out and about on your commute. But since I live in SoCal, where you just drive everywhere, I love that I can just grab it from the trunk of my car using the top handle, sling it over my shoulder for a really short trip from the parking lot to my office. I know EDC is all about function, but I do like that this bag is stylish as well. As a famous singer once put it, this bag is simple and clean. It pairs easily with many outfits and even comes in a variety of colors. However, the real kicker is the price. While MSRP is $45, I was able to grab this on sale a few months ago for around $10 off. But even at original pricing, I'd buy another one in a heartbeat. In my journey to consolidate what I'm carrying, to be a little more lightweight and free, I moved a majority of my tasks to the thing I use the most, my smartphone. And my daily driver is a blue one terabyte iPhone 13 Pro Max with a tan D-brand skin out back, which I must say is looking rather nice six months in. I use it to type up documents and scripts. I do research on it, email. It's also my stills camera and photo editing machine that's always connected Connected, which allows me to post where and when I want. The quality of the cameras are so good, we use it professionally on the Austin Evans YouTube channel to shoot our thumbnails and especially to film in stores low key, where our bigger cameras might draw unwanted attention. Though Bossman kinda does that himself, this walk-in ray of in sunshine, but the key here is iOS and its optimization for the hardware. Aside from editing YouTube videos, which is obviously done on a computer, a fair amount of my job relies on social media and content creation apps. And in my experience, ones like Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and Lightroom Mobile all run best on iOS. Additionally, our video work here at Overclock Media is done on Mac. So being able to transfer videos or photos and pick things up on my laptop with features like airdrop and handoff is a blessing for times when I can stick around at my desk for a little bit. Past the point of tech enthusiasm, my phone is simply a utility that fits my own lifestyle and workflow. It's akin to what a daily driver is to a weekend car. A simple, solid, dependable workhorse you don't think about that gets the job done every single time. And if I'm to carry on this analogy, I also keep a second phone for fun and a little science. You've heard me talk in length about my main, but the side bay is a rotating mix of devices that lets me experience other options outside my wheelhouse. Recently, I swapped out my Galaxy Z Fold 3 for a bright orange S22 Ultra. And this is probably the first Android phone in a while that I find myself gravitating towards over my iPhone. Being able to take notes on its gorgeous 6.8 inch 120 hertz display alongside two day battery life and its excellent cameras, it really gives my iPhone 13 Pro Max a run for its money. This is especially the 
case with the ladder feature. Images produced out of the S22 Ultra's array of cameras are stunningly sharp across the board. The 10X lens, which I thought would be a gimmick, is actually godlike and allows for fun, compressed compositions that don't look like they're shot on a phone. All this to say, the S22 Ultra is a utilitarian, albeit very extra option in the smartphone space that I've missed from Samsung until now. In the scheme of simplifying everyday carry, downsizing your wallet can either be easy or difficult depending on your needs and preferences. But fortunately for me here in the LA metro area, I can rely on Apple and Samsung Pay for most of my transactions. But for fringe cases where I need my physical cards, that's where the MagSafe wallet comes in. What did he say? <laughs> Shock. Aw. Oh, I know, I know. There's a lot of hate on this accessory, with people citing a weak magnetic hold, but I've never really had issues personally. In fact, I use it as a grip point on my large 13 Pro Max during one-handed use. But I think that using it on a grippier surface, like my leather D-brand skin, helps a lot compared to the bare glass of the phone. The MagSafe wallet can hold three normal-sized cards, which is exactly what I was able to consolidate to. And then for everything else, I have a Bellroy travel wallet. I've used it heavily through most of my travels pre pandemic and it holds a lot of stuff passports cards ids cash business cards it even has a built-in mini pen for when you have to fill out forms or sign receipts on the fly all this in a package that stays fairly slim and is easy to stow one of the most annoying things about EDC is that I can't leave home without my keys. And they are easily one of the most annoying things to carry around. Even just a few of them can be loud, bulky to carry, uncomfortable to stuff in a pocket, but that's where KeySmart comes in. Similar in principle to a Swiss army knife, KeySmart stows your keys efficiently into a compact form factor that solves all of the problems I mentioned earlier, making them less cumbersome to carry. $20 gets you their cheapest option, and in my opinion, it's the best bang for your buck. Now keep in mind, it does require a little bit of upkeep, retightening two of the retention screws holding your keys together after about a month or two of use. But other than that, it's rock solid. Also on my key ring is my car fob and an air tag to track its whereabouts. Since I can be fairly forgetful sometimes and misplace things, I've been getting a lot of use out of it. Multi-tools can be a lifeline in a pinch. Lately, my go-to is the Leatherman Wave Plus, which gives me everything I need to keep things moving. It's got a knife for unboxings, a screwdriver for screwing cameras to tripod plates or assembling IKEA furniture. It's got a handy pair of scissors, a saw, file, bottle opener, all of this in an incredibly rigid body that's not too bulky. Quality multi-tools generally won't be cheap. I spent about a hundred bucks on the Wave Plus. But these things are almost an investment with how long they last and their versatility to tackle any randomness that might happen throughout the day. Music gets me going. It's a motivator. It picks me up. It can calm me down. As a result, I value being able to grab a pair of headphones and listen to my favorite songs on command, whether I'm using my iPhone or S22 Ultra. And lately, I've been testing both the Galaxy Buds Pro, which I got for free with my S22 and the Sony Lake Buds. The Galaxy Buds Pro is a more traditional option with its active noise canceling that lets you block out the world around you as well as a well-tuned ambient mode that does the exact opposite. They sound phenomenal for most types of music, are comfortable to wear for long periods of time, and it's easy to stow because the case is fairly small. Most importantly, they work with both of my smartphones, though they obviously pair better with the S22 with a whole slate of tweaks that you can change in the first party app, especially since most of the toggles that I would use anyway are available via touch. Now, the more interesting set that I carry are the Sony Link Buds. Normally, I wouldn't carry around two pairs of headphones in my everyday bag, but the entire package is so tiny that it doesn't really make much of a difference. What makes this product so 
appealing is the unique balance of sound quality and ambient noise it lets you hear, which can be useful in some active, commuting, and office environments where you need to pay more attention to your surroundings. But the compromise with a lack of passive sound isolation is the bass. Now, credit where credit's due, there is an impressive amount of it when you mess around with the EQ, but it's still no replacement for a proper in-ear monitor design like that of the Galaxy Buds Pro. In fact, I think the Buds Pro are more comfortable, the ambient sound mode offers a good substitute for actual real ambient sound, and they're cheaper by 30 to 50 bucks on most days. I'm probably gonna get some shit for this because it's not an apples to apples comparison, but in the scheme of Bluetooth headphones, I can't not compare them. That's all I got for my everyday carry. Simplicity is key to making the most of what I have, and I'm always adapting the setup for what's important to me at any given time. I'll have links to everything I've talked about in the description below, and let me know in the comments. What's the best part of your everyday carry?